So arguably one of the most controversial shows to come out this year has officially premiered and everyone hates it, but nobody's talking about it. Hey guys, what's up? It's Emergency and welcome, welcome back to my channel. Today we are back and we are talking about HBO's new show, The Idol. I know, I know. Before y'all start jumping at me because <laughs> <laughs> the internet has been going wild on people that have been watching this show and that actually started watching this show for a valid reason, which we'll get into. We're watching for science. More so, I am watching The Idol, so you don't have to if you don't want to. But basically, if you aren't familiar, The Idol is a new HBO drama made by the sick and twisted minds, heavy on it, by the way, of Sam Levinson, you know, the guy who wrote Euphoria and who I've made a couple videos on and who people really just do not like because of his writing and everything. And shockingly, The Weeknd. No one really thought that these two would be working together and would create something like this show, but here we are. And The Idol is basically a show that highlights and talks about the dark side of the music industry and about Hollywood as a whole, and follows the main character, Jocelyn, who is a pop star, through some of the harsh and dark situations that pop stars and people in the industry go through, through the eyes of Sam Levinson. And it's really important to make that distinction because you can really see and tell that Mr. Levinson had his hands and fingers deep into the script and deep into this plot. Because some of the things that went down in this first episode are just, wow. So yeah, like I said, in this video, we're gonna get into that, really delve into the controversy behind this show, as well as talking a little bit about the Sam Levinson effect that I have been mentioning in past videos, and then getting into my actual review of this first episode, as well as my predictions and expectations for the rest of the season. But before we do any of that, if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. We just hit 200,000 subscribers. And I really thank all of you so, so much for that. I am so grateful to have you all part of the roommates and to have you all supporting me. It means a whole bunch. I've been a little MIA lately because life update, I'm moving. Where I'm moving, you can take your guesses. It really isn't that hard to guess if you really think about um, who I am, what I do. But I'll have more on that later. But that's why uploads have been sort of inconsistent lately. But I do have a bunch of new content for y'all coming up soon, where I'll be going into the deep dark mind of Sam Levinson and how he writes shows like Euphoria and The Idol and why he's like that, basically. <laughs> as well as a full comprehensive review of The Idol once all the episodes come out. So make sure that you're subscribed so that you don't miss out on any of that content. Also, I already make sure to leave a like on this video because it helps out so, so much with the YouTube algorithm and you can follow me on my socials at Emergency on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. We're close to 300K on TikTok and on Instagram, I just be posting me looking a little caught. So yeah, go and do that. But let's talk about The Idol really quick. So like I said, The Idol has landed itself in a bunch of controversy recently, mostly stemming from a scathing review from the Rolling Stone back in March, in which the article described The Idol as being quote unquote, twisted torture P word. And basically exposed some of the darker and more twisted and kind of gross plot lines that the show was involved in, as well as some of the drama that was going on on set. Apparently there are a lot of different production changes and idea differences in the making of this show, and a general overall poor working environment and conditions. And if that wasn't bad enough, there were reports coming out of very disturbing plot lines going on in the show, which involved things like DV and other forms of intimate violence that were just really messed up. And I apologize in advance for some of the censored language here. For one, I want to get this video demonetized, and two, this video happens to be sponsored by AG1. Ah, you see I gotta hate that transition. Take it away, sponsored Rumi. So what is AG1, you may ask? For one, great question. AG1 is a comprehensive all-in-one greens powder engineered to fill the nutritional gaps in your diet and support your body's nutritional needs in the four pillars of health, which are gut health, immune support, energy, and recovery. And let me tell you, AG1 is not just for athletes, but it's for what they like to call life leads. Gym rookies, busy parents, first timers, and really just everyone in between. AG1 comes packed with 75 vitamins and minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens, all in one convenient daily serving. Now, most people aren't getting their proper amount of vitamins from the food that they eat daily. That's personally why I take AG1 to make sure that I am covered and only need to drink one drink a day as opposed to worrying about taking a bunch of different supplements every day. And it's actually super easy to use. All you do is put a scoop of AG1 powder into some water or a drink of your choice and shake or mix it until it's blended fully and then you're done. Now I will be honest, I'm gonna keep it real with y'all. When I first tried AG1, I was not a huge fan of the flavor. It did catch me a little off guard. It's kind of earthy and minerally, but knowing that I'm getting the nutrients that I need to support my energy and my immune system really helped me get used to it quick. 
So if you're interested in getting started with AG1, you can click the link in my description to get a free year's supply of vitamin D3, K2, and five travel packs completely for free with your first purchase. Thanks AG1 for sponsoring this section of this video. Let's get on to the rest of it. So basically after all of that initial drama that all happened pre-release of this show, everyone was sort of looking at the idol kind of twisted because what do you mean that's what this show is going to cover? What do you mean like these are the conditions, this is what's been going on behind the scenes for this show? And that whole Rolling Stone article really Really sparked a lot of controversy and a lot of backlash for the idol. We were seeing a lot of cries online for people to boycott the show and just to generally not support it and if you were gonna watch the show to like not watch it on HBO and, and to go from other third-party sources. Like the internet was and currently still is really mad about the show and like I said there is some valid reason to this and I feel like after that initial scandal with Rolling Stone things kind of died down for the idol just a little bit and then the Cannes Film Festival happened, which sparked everything up again right before release. And if you're unfamiliar with what the Cannes Film Festival is, I don't blame you. Most people can't even pronounce it. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing it right. I'm just going based on what the girlies have been saying, you know. I'm just a messenger girl. <laughs> But apparently the first couple episodes of The Outer War premiered at Cannes and it got some interesting reviews. I say interesting in lieu of another word because let's just say that most of them were not positive. You had critics from Cannes saying it was crude, gross, sexist. Grim, gross, and vulgar. Nasty, brutish, and feels much longer than it is, and way, way worse than you could have anticipated. One critic going so far as saying, the show's sleaze, intentional or not, would be one thing, but it's the hideous, self-excusing presentation of our word culture that rankles. And girl, you know this I'm serious because they're bringing out words that, according to Google Dictionary, are archaic. <laughs> when you have to start bringing out the prehistoric vernacular, <laughs> to describe your distaste for a show, you know something is going wrong. And right after the Cannes Film Festival, The Idol had a abysmal Rotten Tomato score. As of recording this right now, it's sitting at a 27%, which is pretty low, but I feel like I saw somewhere that it's been lower, but you know, don't hold me to that. But basically with all this drama, there was a lot of anticipation and a lot of just general confusion about what this show was going to be. With all this negative press that it was getting, it was really hard to be excited for this show, if I'm being honest. Some of the most redeeming qualities of this show has to be its star-studded cast. You have some Gen Z faves like Troy Sivan, of course The Weeknd actually being in the show himself, as well as Jenny from Blackpink, which is so random, but also huge. And then they also just had a random cameo from Maddie from Euphoria, actually as Maddie from Euphoria, in case you missed it from episode one. Spoiler alert also, by the way. She doesn't have any lines. She's just dancing looking real during the club scene. But just the fact that there's a Sam Levinson cinematic universe that's all connected was a little wild. It just really seemed that they were pulling out all the stops to get people to watch this, especially when it came to the promo of this show. Like they were definitely pushing the presence of certain characters in the show a little bit harder than others. <clears throat> Jenny, <clears throat> black, pink. But yeah, I will say before the show actually premiered, I was interested in the show's overall plot of just showing the dark side of Hollywood. It was just that after all the bad press and all the horrible things that I've been hearing about the show's production and how they're going about showing the dark side of Hollywood really gave me second thoughts about watching it. But I feel like with most people, I kind of wanted to watch the first episode at least to, to formulate my own opinions. And I could solidly say after seeing that first episode, I, I see what people were talking about. <laughs> The first episode just shows how dark and how, I guess, raunchy this show is going to be. And it's only said to get darker because I don't know if they're keeping in the scenes that were being reviewed in the Rolling Stone article and from insiders. But if they do keep those scenes that were a lot darker and were a lot more, um, I'm not gonna say what they are in this video. You can like look at the articles yourselves to know exactly what I'm talking about. But yeah, then it's gonna be real bad. The show itself, I'd say it was shot very well. Like cinematically, it's reminiscent very much of Euphoria. Like they have, you can definitely see Sam Levinson's style in this. Like I believe it's shot on film or at least has the same like presentation as Euphoria does. But girl, it's just the plot and the dialogue and the things that characters say and the actual plot points that are just simply gross. <laughs> like the whole first episode starts off with Lily Rose Depp's character, Jocelyn. Like there's like a whole scene where they're like talking about Jocelyn's nudity, but then all that gets one up because an intimate picture of Jocelyn gets leaked online and they have to deal with all of that. And just throughout the first 20 minutes, you're just being bombarded by a lot. Like there's a lot going on. And a lot of problematic things that I feel like were made intentionally to get the internet talking about them. Like for example, there's a whole bit in the dialogue where they're talking about like the glorification of mental illness and like making mental illness sexy. And that's just like a clear bit to sort of like poke fun at the internet because they know that the internet's gonna get mad at that. As that's been a topic of conversation in just like media overall 
for like the past couple of years. And I feel like there's points like that a lot where it just seems like there are attempts at satire and like social commentary, but they sort of fall flat because like it doesn't seem like it's a joke. Like <laughs> there's also a scene between Jocelyn's character and her assistant talking about Abel's character or the weekend's character, Tedros in which they sort of talk about and glorify, I'll say intimate violence, which is just generally distasteful and just something that no woman would actually say in real life. Which sort of brings me to my next point of this show, at least in its first episode, is so clearly written by a man for the male gaze. Which is really interesting because in the Rolling Stone article, they sort of talk about how Abel thought that the show had a really strong female perspective. But no, this show was definitely written by a man sort of for like I said, the male gaze. And that's sort of a theme with Sam Levinson's work, which I would consider to be like the Sam Levinson effect. Again, I'm not gonna break into it completely. I'm gonna have a separate video for that coming up. But there are so many examples of lines in this first episode where the women in the show just randomly say things that I feel like Sam thinks a woman would actually say or that really resonates with women. But you know, it doesn't and it flops and it flops very, very, very hard. There are also just like random nudity scenes where there don't need to be. Like one that comes to mind is like a random scene of Jocelyn waking up in the morning, but she's not wearing any clothes. And again, that's fine because I get for storytelling is showing that like Jocelyn is just like this free spirit. She doesn't care. She's meant to be super sexually liberated and comfortable with her body, but like you don't need to necessarily show all of that. Like I feel like they just kind of sexualize her unnecessarily where it just doesn't make sense for the plot. It kind of gives fan service in the way that like I feel like what Sam is doing with Jocelyn's character is like what he was doing with Cassie's character on Euphoria. Just if Cassie was an adult and Sam was allowed to do whatever without having to worry about like people saying like, oh, you're over sexualizing high schoolers, which now that I'm thinking about it makes me terrified for Euphoria season two because there's supposed to be a time skip and I made a whole video on this before, but like they're going to be adults, which means that I am really scared for Sydney Sweeney's character because girl, if the idol is telling us anything about what Sam does to adults in his show, Sydney, check your contracts, please. <laughs> but it's just safe to say that the way the show is written, at least for this first episode is Gross, to say the least. But let's talk about this first episode's plot overall. So like I was saying, we were introduced to Jocelyn, the pop star, and just how she's just overworked and constantly under this scrutiny. Like I said, I love seeing like this darker inside world to celebrity and just like the music industry because we've seen time and time again how in real life that plays out with people like Britney Spears, Miley Cyrus, et cetera, et cetera. Where like this hyper visibility of like the public on a pop star really just makes them crack under pressure. And this first episode, we see the beginnings of that where when that picture leaks, everyone has their eyes on Jocelyn to see if she's going to crack and relapse into these unhealthy coping mechanisms, which are referenced throughout the episode. And I will say there's one scene where Jocelyn and her backup dancers are practicing for her tour and they let Jenny's character take the lead for doing the choreo and Jenny just ate down. She ate down so bad. Like I obsess, really obsessed. Honestly, one of the highlights of this episode, in my opinion. And I feel like this first episode was going very well up until Abel's character was introduced because, ooh, that man is so creepy, so gross, so icky. And I feel like Abel does a great job at being an icky, gross character. A little too good, for my opinion. Tedros, the character's name. I don't know what his vibe is. It's definitely given that he wants to manipulate and take over Jocelyn's life. And you can see that, by the way, he just tries so hard to be like this perfectly manicured person. There's a scene in like the latter half of the episode where Tedros is over at Jocelyn's house while Jocelyn's getting ready and he's like practicing saying his line, being like, hey Angel. And that's just like so icky and slimy and I really relate with Jocelyn's assistant just in being so disgusted by Tedros. And I feel like overall with this episode, the all time ick had to come from that very last scene. Like the last scene where Tedros and Jocelyn are in the studio and apparently Jocelyn has this fantasy of being asphyxiated. And yeah, basically that's what happens in the studio and it's really sensual and very intimate to say the least, yeah. Um, <laughs> and while watching that scene, I was just kind of like, oh, um, I feel like I'm interrupting something that I should not be seeing. And well, let's hurry this on up. Let's, let's finish the episode, yeah. And it was just wild because I can see where this is going. I could definitely see where this plot is going. A little, it's kind of scary, yeah. Cause it really is giving that Tedros is planting the seeds to take over Jocelyn's life. And honestly, I kind of want to see how it plays out, which is a really bad thing because I feel like this is solidly going to be a hate watch for me. Like the show is bad and the writing is questionable at least, but the plot itself is interesting. 
or at least interesting enough to see where it goes. Because after I was watching, I saw like the preview that HBO usually does for like their big shows where they say like, oh, this is the making of, or this is what's coming up. And I know the point of it is to make it look interesting, but like, it seems like it's going in a very interesting place. So I'll personally be keeping up and seeing where it goes. And I'll circle back with you if things get worse or better in a later video. Again, subscribe so that you don't miss out when that video does eventually come out. But overall, I'm not really expecting too, too much to come out of this. Like I'm not, I feel, I personally just feel like there's going to be more outrage between this episode and I'd say like the third one. I think this show only has six episodes. Yeah, there are only six episodes in the season, which, which is very on brand for streaming services right now. But I feel like based on what the reviewers are saying who've gotten early access, they saw the first two episodes, I believe. So whatever is in the next episode might change my opinion on whether I continue watching or not. But for right now, I'd give the show a solid three to four out of 10, which I feel like is the lowest rating I've given a show like ever on this channel, just from first impressions from the first episode. But again, we'll see if we'll carry on. I'll keep an eye out for how the show develops and if it gets any better with time. But now I wanna hear from you. What do you think about this whole idol drama? Have you seen the first episode? Will you be watching? And if so or not, give me your reasons why. I'd love to hear in the comments below. Thanks again so much for watching and for 200K. Again, don't forget to subscribe, leave a like on this video, and follow me on my social side emergency. Also, don't forget that AG1 is giving you an immune supporting free one year of vitamin D and five travel packs with your first purchase. So click the link in my description to go check that out. But other than that, y'all, I've been emergency and I will see you in the next video. Peace.